Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief at theserverside.com, and I wanted to show you how Java's Java P command works. Java's Java P command disassembles one or more classes and prints out oh, a variety of results depending on how you parameterize the command. Uh, to show you how the Java P command works, I've got a class here named Command Tutorial. It extends array list and it's got a bunch of methods and variables in it that have differing access modifiers, private, protected, public and default, and also some methods that are static and non-static. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this project and just run the Java P command on this class. Now, if I look, you can see that I'm not in the bin directory, so I need to move into the bin directory, and then I'll just say Java P, com.mcnz.javap.example dot command tutorial and you notice that the basic output of the Java P command is just to list all of the different methods and properties that are not private. And you can see that there's no private reference here although there is a private static final long variable. Now by the way if you do want to see all of the private variables you can always just do dash p and that'll bring them in but you know we don't like to expose our privates in the world of Java so that's kind of a an interesting way to use the tool but I don't know if that's particularly helpful so when people are using the Java P tool they go a little bit deeper and one level of depth that you can go is to take a look at the Java bytecodes that are created the instructions that comprise the Java bytecodes for each class and you do that by adding in the dash C switch in there. I don't want to type out the entire class so I'm just going to go to my previous command and type dash C, click return and you notice that this now prints out the disassembled code and let's take a little look at it. You can see over here seeing some of the instructions that the bytecode uses. So that's a little bit more interesting. There's also another command that you can use called sysinfo, which will show you the path, md5 hash, other pieces of information about the class. So why don't we do that? Sysinfo. And there you can see the last modified date, the md5 checksum, and the class that we've actually compiled from. Now, if you want to an option, a flag on the JDK's Java P command that does it all, well you can just jump into the verbose mode. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click that up button to bring the old command in and then I'm just going to say give me your best. Give me the Java P verbose output for this class. And here when we go into the verbose output you'll know that it gets pretty crazy. It uh, includes information about nested members. So if you actually took a look at the class, it had a well, syntax that I'm not a big fan of, but it had a, an inner class declared and it had an inner type declared as well. Or no, that inner type method uses uh, a lambda to create the inner type. That's the inner type interface right there. I think we even had a crazy class nested inside of a method called inner class. So we've got inner type and inner class. And yeah, if we go down into the console terminal window and take a look at the output, we can see that, yeah, that inner class and that inner type are both listed here. We've got some inner class listings. And boy, there's all sorts of verbose information from the variable tables that Java P prints out to information about how the class is structured. And so there you go. Those are the basics of the Java JDK's Java P command and a couple of the more popular options you can use when you're using the Java P command at the command line. And there you go. That's how easy it is to use Java's Java P command. Now, if you enjoyed that quick tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor in chief over there. And we've got lots of great tutorials on Java, the JDK, Jakarta EE, and everything that has to do with enterprise development. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ and subscribe on the YouTube.